we've had three uh, great talks. I'm on a mission to try and still get us to finish at eight o'clock. So I think that gives us actually 10 minutes of discussion. Does everybody want to just come back? The speakers just come back, turn their cameras on. Uh, very helpfully, Dan has kindly kind of suggested a couple of speakers, a couple of questions already. Um, I, uh, Dave might pick this up a little bit towards the end, but I think it's a good question. And then maybe give Sabrina a chance to think about Dave's question for her, which is in the webinar chat, Sabrina. But the, the question that uh, Dave, that Dan was asking is, um, yeah, is, is there such a thing as food poverty? Do these kind of, does this fractured language of poverty help or hinder us? What's going on? As I said in the talk, you know, you'd probably wrote that before I said it, but I do think that it does inevitably hinder us uh, because poverty is poverty. It's just the, it's the disease of poverty that we're all trying to tackle. And each individual, you know, myself included, I am I, re I recognize I am part of this poverty industry. You know, I built a career on talking about food banks, um, as has other people. Um, and I think this fracturing of, of poverty into these silos means that these people, actors within this industry, just typically focus on their area. Uh, and I don't think it is enough to, to be able to tackle the breadth of food po of, of poverty. I think that's what we should be focusing on, is, is tackling poverty, which for me, a universal basic income, it inevitably wipes the slate clean and tackles poverty. It, it tackles food poverty, uniform poverty, uh, hygiene poverty. It, it's, it should be enough to tackle poverty. And so and then Sabrina. So, I mean, and I'll just make this tiny point here, because, I mean, we started really with Sabrina's description of of global food poverty and of, you know, effect, issues affecting huge percentage of the Earth's population. And we've ended with, well, a powerful talk from Dave, but also one that highlights like a country that is supposedly a successful Western developed country, which has been on this terrible trajectory around food and poverty dan's question to you sabrina was well you know from a uk perspective um is there a country we should be looking at or how where should we be turning our attention as food citizens really um well that's a one million dollar question <laughs> um i will try to answer uh, quickly and something that could be useful. Um, uh, I, I, what, what I notice also is, um, uh, uh, from a foreigner perspective, no, uh, there is a disconnection. Um, uh, I don't know in, in the other nations, but in England, I see there is a disconnection between the concept of food and agriculture. So uh, there is a disconnection in when we talk about food system, we should talk about agri-food systems, no? And, uh, and the knowledge that the food that we consume every day comes from food producers, from... Uh, from... So uh, I, I don't see like a virtuous country uh, that uh, uh, has done this. Uh, maybe, you know, there are some Mediterranean countries because there are, there are uh, cult culturally, uh, um, uh, there has been uh, a more, more connection between the rural and the urban context. And so this may come more naturally. And, uh, and there are some local experiences where um, this is happening uh, better, more, more on an uh, urban level rather than on a national level in terms of policies. Uh, what I think is one of the, the great issues in this country is the problem of land inequality and land access. Um, if you have populations that are uh, com completely uh, isolated uh, from the rural world, and the rural world is a little bit um, idealized, like a fairy tale place where people go on a holiday, but uh, it's not a um, territory that is lived and experienced and uh, where there are citizens connecting and living uh, the connection between the agri and the food on a daily basis through markets, through connections with farmers and consumers, fisher people, fisher folks also, and uh, consumers. Um, 
this is where I, um, I think that uh, there is a lot of work to do, but that is has to do, uh, do, these are not like spot policies, they are policies that have to do with rural development and territorial development. Uh, so it's a lot of work that starts from rethinking the right and the access to land. Also for young people who want to cultivate the land and want to see job opportunities in agriculture as something that is um, attractive um, and, uh, and possible. At the moment, this is not possible because uh, the policies um, are uh, to, to guarantee access, um, dignified work, well-paid work in agricultural sector or horticultural programs for young people to, to, um, to start new, um, uh, new idea, new projects, access to land. Um, it, it's, it's very, very difficult. So this is one thing. I don't want to uh, mention particular countries because uh, they are, uh, it's, it's so difficult to find uh, like virtuous things, but there might be some uh, some policies and some examples that can be taken from from there and could be easily uh, applied to the to the UK context because uh, fertile land there is a lot and uh, it's it's a problem of uh, rethinking the territories and uh, the relationship between the rural and the urban context. So in in. Um, and so I'm, I think what I'd like everybody to do, and Alicia, I know you haven't had a chance to speak, but is maybe just think about one final thing you'd like to say, because as it's eight o'clock is on, on its way. And I'd like to just, and I know it's, a, it's, a, it's an overly, unduly simplifying question, but what we, what's, what's obviously very striking about the conversation today is the almost the different starting points for the different speakers um, from that global perspective, looking at the, the peasants movement as, and the, the reclaiming of power and that relationship with land, a kind of civil society conversation that Dan was talking about and the way we imagine things. And Dave really talking about kind of social policy and UBI directed at this broken um, poverty industry. So it's like, what well, you know, just strategically, I suppose, what are we doing when we seem to be failing so badly, when governments seem to be failing, when the capitalism seems to be driving these problems, where all the traditional sources of power, even the charitable sector, arguably, seem to be embedded in sustaining the wrong solutions. Mm -hmm. I guess it's come back to Alicia's kind of <laughs> creed occur, really, which is like, well, how do the people turn this around so how do we people who who you're speaking to both now in this little group and then on youtube and in the work of citizen network and alicia as we take this forward how should we conceive of progress what's the way forward and so really and I'll, and alicia you could maybe you want to end and we could start with um maybe i'll pick on you dan because you asked those lovely questions but you could go next and then and then maybe uh sabrina and then dave and then alicia is that all right sure um, do. thanks i mean i mean yeah a big question to end on um and i think we need a we need a platform for everyone to participate uh on a, on a level footing hence why you know personally i was supportive of things like um ubi that dave was talking about but um i think we need that yeah we need some of it is the Changing that mindset that I talked about before, that mindset from consumer to citizenship, but actually that does 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 yeah does take us into different territory. And if we if we are we recognise that we have got power through sharing, growing, campaigning, investing, advocating, partnering, um, you know, uh, kind of doing things together and have kind of collectively we can have collective missions that we all aim for and, and support each other on rather than the kind of individualistic um, and and sort of free market ideology about you know, let's uh, let's leave it to people to make the right choices. But obviously, lots of people don't have those those options and those choices. So um, there's no one simple thing. But yeah, give it a platform so we can all all participate. Thanks, Dave. Uh, I think I said, did I say Dave and then Sabrina or Sabrina the Dave? I can't remember now. 
I think Dan's definitely right. Um, <clears throat> people need to re. I, I think people need to reconnect with food, and I know that that's very very difficult now, <clears throat> when food and the income to buy food is so scarce for millions of people. Which is why I am advocating for the idea of a basic income, just to give people that time to stop mentally, physically. Uh, they've got more time and they can reconnect with what food is, get the hands stuck in the soil and start growing food. People don't tend to do that because they're so time poor. But if you could relieve people's poverty or the time poverty, then they've got more time to invest in their own health, got more time to invest in food and become a real food citizen. You know, the idea that they can be part of what food is instead of picking it up from aisle six in a rush. Thanks, Dave. Sabrina. Well, um, just in addition to what uh, Dan and Dave have already said, from an individual perspective, it can be also supporting all the existing movements that are pushing forward change of policies, pushing forward access to land. We have fantastic examples in the UK, the Land Workers Alliance and other organizations that are um, um, um working for a change in the uh, food system in this country in order for people who have more access to the land cultivate and uh, and have access to healthier agroecological food and more culturally appropriate food towards uh, food sovereignty so um it's both on an individual level and also supporting uh, with solidarity, petitions, and any type of support uh, that can be there, uh, movements that are already uh, doing a lot of work from, towards this change. Thank you, Sabrina. And Alicia, what would you like to make a statement really about your sense of the next steps? Yeah. Um, I was really pleased that the um, people's food policy was mentioned because um, that is grassroots work and they have produced specific policies and a very comprehensive look at the needs, uh, you know, a successful food policy. And I think we should be using those. I quite agree. We should be using those um, in policy proposals that we make. And we should also make use of the other um, big grassroots development of policies, which is DM's work in uh, in uh, Europe and their Green New Deal for Europe um, uh, protects, works to protect the environment and works to protect individuals and communities and has a lot um, to say about the way funding needs to be decentralised and uh, democratised. Uh, so I think that there is work there which we should um, take full advantage of and use and start producing formal policies um, because the people's uh, food policies is very comprehensive. It covers many more topics than we have yet managed to. Um, so I think that's the way forward. And I also think we should um, join with people in the global South who know exactly how awful uh, the trade rules are and um, the banking rules are, and we should um, throw our full support behind them to get that change so that the global farmers in the South can farm in the way that works and it works for them. Thank you so much. Well, I want to thank all the speakers. I'm really honoured that you um, were prepared to come and speak on this topic with Citizen Network. The issues you've selected and talked about and focused on are all important to Citizen Network. Citizen Network is about advancing a world where everyone matters, and we believe that can only be achieved through all of us being citizens. Um, we, we And solidarity that Sabrina mentions is critical to that. And Citizen Network actually has 15,000 members in about 40 countries, including large parts of Africa and India, as well as um, USA, Canada, and across Europe. And We've helped create the UBI Lab Network because we think economic security is an essential component for all citizens, but we're constantly trying to work out how to 
support the kind of grassroots initiatives that Alicia is leading here. So we'll carry on working with Alicia. We encourage people to sign up to Citizen Network, but also to join other members of this team and the, the things that they're involved in. So please do that. Again, just thank you. Go and have, um, well, I'm going to go and have something to eat. So I hope that you've either eaten or will be eating shortly. Thank you. Bon <laughs> thank you. Thanks all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. You okay, Alicia? Yeah, fine. Gosh, they were so impressive. Yeah, it was good. They were good, weren't they? Yes, lots. Yes. Lots yeah. of them. I mean, all your speakers have been great, though. Yeah, Every they, single one of them. Yeah. I, I'm so grateful to them. You've done yeah. a brilliant job. Brilliant job. Well, luck. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's luck. You've been on, but anyway, <laughs> you've done a very good job. <laughs> yeah. um, but so that's so um, we'll get this. This the other one's ready to go out. Right. Uh, so we'll try and get this done fairly soon. Um, yeah. So I think. When do we say really next? Um, Not till September. Yes, a... that's right. Yes, and I'm so, but I'm a, I am around. I've got projects to complete and things. Um, and we're not. We will. We'll be having a little holiday. Me and Nicola right at the end of September. So it's probably not the last week in September is what we should because then we'll, we'll be in Greece. Hopefully. Oh, lovely! That's our favourite place, but we haven't been for years. Yeah. yeah. I well, love the Greeks. I, I just want them all to be my friends because they're just so <laughs> civilised. Well, my wife is partly Greek, so yes, that's Greek. Yes. <laughs> I'm a very lucky man. Yeah, yeah, you are. Um, all right. So, uh, yeah, stay in touch if there's anything. But, yes, let's look for middle of September, I guess. Right. OK. The, there's one. Uh, there's the 21st. Is that too late? Let me have a look. I think that's a Thursday. I mentioned it to... Um... You, you see, you're so efficient, you're on it already. The 21st is OK, yeah. Oh, right. Should we put that in? Because And actually, the week before, I can't do it because I'm working in Brussels. Oh, right. Um, yeah, so the 21st is probably the ideal. Right. And I'll try to get um, someone on, on um, processed food, you know, healthy food versus processed food right and maybe um agricultural workers decent thing i don't know yeah the, the yeah the kind of labor side to i mean again it's a very interesting listening to sabrina though isn't it because it's it's once you start to put it in a world context i mean it's everything you say but you really understand it's the power lacking power uh, economic and legal and political and democratic power lacking basic control over your own land which we now take for granted don't we because we've all been industrialized yes yeah. so we, we we were pushed out off the land yeah uh, but many countries they're just having their land stolen from underneath them yeah and new new farming techniques i i didn't realize that their funding depended on agreeing to new farm you know to our industrial farming I, I know that back in the uh, 60s, when I was at college, um, the M, uh, the uh, World Bank rules stopped them doing all their social programmes, but I didn't realise it had gone into agriculture now. Yeah. All right. Well, before do. we depress ourselves, yeah. <laughs> come the revolution. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Well done again, though. Don't, do, you know, I think you're doing a great job. And I'm only sorry that we are kind of like scrabbling around at times with the limited energy we have to try and do its service. But we'll get there. Well, you haven't shut the door. That's great. No, <laughs> no. I'm learning too much. I'm not going to shut the door on you. It's very, very interesting. Um, yeah, the, the, the tonight's one was more on the more depressing side than some of the others. In a way, it's like you really understand that the forces you're up against but yeah, you know, yeah. Have to understand that yeah yeah all right have yeah. a nice evening yeah. bye bye <laughs>